Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another amazing episode of our Python tutorial series. That's the coding snippet. And there's a build up on one of the earlier coding tutorial sessions, which we looked at um, the wind barbs with, you know, also adding a color field to it, showing the strength of the wind or the speed of the wind. And in this episode, we're actually looking at this from a different um, perspective that's based on a question that was asked by one of our viewers. And um, he was asking if it's possible to add contours to join the wind plots. And then also if it could be done in such a way that we could have the contours maybe indicating the cyclonic or anticyclonic flows. Yeah, that's, I mean, sort of the, and there's also been another question whether we're able to identify, you know, all these convergence points within the wind flows. All right, so let's run the default so you know what we had from the earlier series. I'll still keep the link to that video in the description. You can check and then find out the whole procedure. All right, so this is what we had finally for uh, um, wind bobs. All right, so let me create uh, multiple subplots, maybe say a two by two and start from the first position. And so in the second position, would okay so before that let's um yeah let's just create a second position i think that would be okay so we duplicate this line 31 on line 40 and then we change the plotting index position to two right and then so i want to maintain the close lines in this case i mean same procedure. And then what we are doing now is to have the plots of the contour. So we have so ax dot contour f, which is okay. Well, let's just use a contour first. That way, we don't want to sort of shade the contours. We just want the contour lines. All right. And then now we want the x, that's the longitude, the latitude, and then also what contours to generate. All right. So I have my X and Y. And then we want to indicate the magnitude or the wind speed, which is what we deduce from line 28 as a contours. All right. And then you might want to add the color map. So C map, say so jet. Yeah. Let's maintain same and then run this line of code. And that's what you have over there. All right, so just as we did in the first, we can equate the plotting line to a variable, say the VCB1. And then we generate the color bar for it. And that's it. All right, so. Um, what we need to do is to also, in order to increase the size, we set a fixed size here. So fixed size equals to, let's see, let me set say an eight by eight. Yeah. Well, let's increase it. So 12 by 10, so it gets bigger. All right, okay. And so that's good. Now, we can also decide to use a field contour. So <clears throat> I'm gonna duplicate the second plot also in the third part. Okay. So this will be the third plot. Let me please uh, comment here and indicate third plot. Okay, and so with this, we are now gonna use a contour F, which is the same as the the second plot, but then in this case, we are having a field contour. All right. And that's pretty much what we have. So this is also showing the wind speed, but then in this case, we appreciated their contour. So you notice similarities between them. And so this all towards addressing first one, but then we can you know add contours to join, you know, winds of equal magnitude. So you can always do it this way. And then the second 
question, which was on the possibility of showing, you know, using contour, the contours or let's say joining similar parts or the wind patterns to definitely identify, you know, your flows in the wind. So let me name that as the fourth plot. So And so what we are going to do now is to adapt what we call the stream plot. There's a stream plot function um, under the PLT. Um, let's test it here first and see if the AX has that. Okay, so we can then use AX. So we can generate an axis just as we did in the first case. So we can maintain the same axis, so AX. And this time we are using the fourth position, which this just means that two rows, two columns, and then after creating the grid, we want the fourth grid or the fourth panel to handle the next plot we are creating. And so we are going to maintain the first two, that's 48 and 49 again, because that creates 48, 49, 50, that creates um, the country borders. So if we run that, you would see it creates just a um, geographic map for us. But then now what we want to add over this is to have a stream plot. So we have AX dot stream plot. And the stream plots would need the coordinates. So we have our X, we have our Y. We would also need the zonal and meridional components of the wind. That's the U and then the V instead. So from what we have up here in line 27, we use that and that gives us the stream plots. So we can run that. So, oh, okay, we have an error. Let me see where did this come from? Okay, let's see the content of X. Oh, okay, all right. So what we need to do is to use the values themselves of the X. So we have X dot value, X dot values, and then same for Y, Y dot values, and then U dot values, and then V dot values, yeah. So that creates the stream plot for us. So that's one thing to note with the stream plots. Yeah, actually using the values and ignoring all the other descriptors. All right. So if you want to change the color, you can actually set uh, the color in here and say maybe K, meaning all black. And it changes the color to black, all right? But then what if we want to use the wind um, the wind speed as indicators or as the color map. So what we've done here is with our M that has been defined, which is um, using the zonal and modernal components to generate the wind speed, that's the M. We can set the color to the M, all right? So that it would use the wind speed or the strength, an area of the strength to generate the, um, to generate the, um, the, I mean, the, the intensity is all the color map. First, let's see what the M contains. Okay, so we'd have to use the same M dot values, I believe in this case, yeah. Exactly, and that, you know, creates what we have, but then bear in mind, we've not defined our C map. So we want to use a color map that's similar to what we have in, in the other panels. Then we have to set our C map say to a jet, because what it's using by default is the radius, and that would be quite different. So so we notice in both cases, I mean, in all the instances that our wind um, speeds are actually similar. So depending on whatever sort of plot you're generating, you have the same information. And in the final one, you're able to indicate, you know, convergent points. I mean, where the wind is flowing into a particular location where it's, I mean, it's various type of rotations. I mean, the circulation, but it's moving inward and we have more like a convergent point over here, somewhere on the um, Western part of Mali that's on the boundary of the western part of Mali and then um, close to, I mean, the Senegalese eastern 
borders. All right. And so if you want to also create the um, legend or the color bar by its side, just as we did in the first case, you can also, again, plt.color bar. But then before that, you have to assign this whole plot to a variable, say um, cb3, all right? And then we pass that in here as cb3. Oh, it's yeah, all right, yeah, sure. Okay, so that's a quick one. Now there's a little tweak around this. So with a PLT the color bar, this doesn't work because um, like you, re you, you just read from the error, I mean, there's an attribute error. It doesn't do. It doesn't allow for the auto scaling. So what we can do is to just adapt a little tweak. Okay, so we maintain this as a TV3 plot, but then we can equally just generate um, a con just use the same contour plot that we did in um, I think yes. The control plot in the panel three, which is this, what we've created. So I can duplicate it here, or I just pick the labeling. Okay, so let's make the CB2. Or I can just pick the name CB2, but I'd prefer to duplicate because of what I want to do. Yeah, so if it's, I mean, multi panel, because it's the same, then I could just pass here CB2, and then that would work directly for me. Yes, exactly. So it would work with the same um, range of values because I'm using the same range for the color um, indicators. And it just it's important from the other panel to this. But what if I were plotting just on one panel? So what I could do if I were using one panel is to just um, sort of create the same part again and then set my alpha value to zero. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we can just generate this CB. Okay, so in order not to confuse the names, let's just make the CB3 so you know it's not important from the third panel, but then this is from its own self, all right? So, we have the stream plot, and then we also have a contour F, but then we set the alpha value to zero. So when we set the alpha value to zero, it means the contours wouldn't show. We only have the stream plots, which is on line 61 showing. And what we can do is to um, say our C bar or our color bar equals to the whole color bar we generated. And then this has an attribute of the C bar. We pick all the solids that the solid points and then we set. All we are setting is we are setting the alpha value back to one, only on the color bar. So this works like a tweak, but then you can always use that. So and now you can see in the fourth panel, even though there are no contours showing, only the stream plots, but then we use the contours that were sort of um, transparent. Okay, we use that to generate the color bar. Now, to make it clear to you, if we comment line 61, which is a stream plot, we expect that there wouldn't be anything shown because we set our contours to zero, but then there's still a color bar. Now, if we increase this alpha value to say 0 0.25, you would notice that the color, the contours start showing. Okay, so by setting the alpha to zero, all we are doing is to just disengage the um, field contours, all right, so they don't show. But then we also want to make use of the stream plots because that's what we are looking at to find the convergent point, but then, and then the divergent points and all that. But then we also want to use the strength as the color bar. And so that's simply how to do this in your Python environment. I believe you had a wonderful time um, going through this whole um, tutorial. It's more appropriate you practice 
And in fact, that's the best way to learn to always try your hands on it. So do have a wonderful time. See you in another um, episode where we'll look at something more interesting again. And like you always say, I mean, keep learning, keep exploring, and then be the best that you can with your Python tool. Have a wonderful time. See you. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and like, comment, and then if you have any question, leave it in the comment section and also share this with you know people in your contacts, people who would um, love to learn Python. Have a wonderful time and be good. Bye-bye.